Hello and welcome to today's continuing study on women in the Bible. Uh, today we're returning to the New Testament and looking at two women who no doubt would have been lost to history but for the intervention of Jesus, that of Jairus' daughter and of the widow with the two mites. Um, the texts for both today being drawn from the book of Mark. Jesus' claim to be the Messiah no doubt would have sent the hopes of the Jewish people soaring. They witnessed his healings of the physical body, his mastery over nature, his power over the spirit world. Jairus, an official in charge of the services and the care of the synagogue, he may well have shared the scepticism of the Jewish leaders, but a personal dilemma sent him to the great physician. The twelve-year-old daughter of this distraught father was at the point of death. Hope for the future of her Jewish family lay with this young woman. In her earnest supplication, Jairus pled with Jesus to come and to lay his hands of healing upon her. He led the Master and his disciples through the curious and the crushing throngs with an urgent pace. Suddenly, Jesus stopped and asked, Who touched me? A desperately ill woman had simply touched the hem of his garment. No doubt Jairus must have winced at this interruption. For him, time was important. His anxious spirit must have gladdened when he saw the miracle of restoration for a woman who had suffered for as long as his little girl had been alive. But at that moment of rejoicing, his own servant arrived with tragic news. His daughter had already died. It was too late. At that instant of hopelessness, Jesus spoke to him, Do not be afraid, only believe, and she will be made well. Luke 8, chapter, um, Luke chapter 8 and verse 50. The Lord helped Jairus refocus on faith and on hope. Slicing through the confusion, Jesus selected Peter, James and John to accompany him into the home of these grief-stricken parents. The wailing mourners were there, and he spoke to them. Do not weep. She is not dead, but sleeping. At this they scoffed in disbelief. He ordered the mourners to leave, and in quiet privacy, he took the lifeless girl's hand and said, Little girl, arise. She stood and walked, and the great physician ordered that she be given food. The Saviour alone gives life to every young woman, and he cares deeply. Each of the three Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke, records this miracle, not only verifying the deity of Jesus Christ, but also reminding us, particularly in these distraught times of great ill health, that ultimately Jesus is still a High Priest, sympathising with us in our weaknesses, he invites us to come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. And of course, it wasn't just ill health that Jesus paid attention to. He also cared for people who were in difficult circumstances brought low by the likes of poverty. And I think, again, we do well to 
emulate and replicate the way in which Jesus cared for people who were suffering. Suffering because of ill health, suffering because of poverty, in the way in which he paid attention to people, in the way in which he contrasted them with those about. Our attention now turns to um, the tale of the widow with two mites. So it's important to recognize here, um, if we read Mark chapter 12 and verse 38 to 40, the verses leading up to the account of the widow with two mites, that Jesus was teaching the people about the hypocrisy of the scribes. He described them as lusting for recognition, seeking the best positions, stealing from the helpless, and yet making a pretense of being religious. Sitting in the women's court where the offering receptacles were located, you can read about that in 2 Kings chapter 12 and verse 9, Jesus used one woman as an example. And the comparison is spectacular. Widowhood was one of the most vulnerable positions of the time. Indeed, the verses we just looked at, Mark chapter 12 and verse 40, the scribes were described as devouring widows' houses. A widow had less capacity for earning than even slaves. And unless she had family or friends to protect and help her, she was most likely destitute and perhaps even homeless. This particular widow was down to her last two mites. It's just a unit of currency that denotes a, a fraction of a penny. Ain't much money at all. Jesus drew the attention of the disciples to this woman who brought delight to his heart. I think it's always remarkable the way in which Jesus draws attention to people whom I'm sure the disciples and his audiences would not have paid very much attention to at all. In reading the Gospels, I'm always struck at again and again the people that he stops, the people that he draws into conversation with, the people that he uses as examples, the people that he uses as moral contrasts to the religious and the community leaders. The sound of this woman's tiny offering as it dropped into the medical the metal receptacle must have been pitiful compared with the rattling of the many coins of the rich. They had apportioned a small percentage of their wealth. She had little, but all she had was given to God. It's remarkable. This was the last event of Jesus' public teaching, the act of this humble, needy widow really seems to summarize all of Jesus' teaching. She wasn't meeting some great need through her teaching. Ultimately, God's resources are unlimited, aren't they? But rather, she was recognizing that everything belongs to God. Because she was in his hands, she could willingly and joyously offer all she had to him. Do I have that same attitude? Many thanks.